So after many, many hours of grinding and pressing and welding, I finally have my three components separated. And here they are. So basically the tricks to doing this is, if you look in here, you can see that I have grinded out a crater and I'll show you the kind of action that you've got to take with an angle grinder in this video and here you can see what, I, what was pressed out and you can see the ridge where I have gone around in a circle with the angle grinder so that's the first trick is this, this, this action of actually cutting around like that with the angle grinder until you see a very fine hairline crack and you may have to whack on it a few times uh, with a, a heavy hammer just to make that crack appear the second trick is to weld lines on the inside and the more you weld um, the more this is going to shrink and the easiest going to be the easiest is going to be to press out if you don't weld on the inside you will not be able to press this out with a 20 ton press unless of course my press is not actually giving me its full 20 tons but certainly it takes an enormous amount of force to push this out unless you weld on the inside because obviously that shrinks the uh, the bore a little bit when you when you weld it <clears throat> so those are the two tricks that you've got to know is that um, it's the action of actually taking the angle grinder and actually going around like that until you get this hairline crack, whacking on it to make the crack appear, and then developing the crack all the way around. And that's step one. And step two is welding on the inside. And if you do those two, th three, those two things, then you'll be able to press this out quite easily. But it still takes hours and hours. So now that we've measured everything, we can start cutting the tubes off. This is a Harbor Freight 20 ton A-frame press. Now I bought this 1 and 7 8 inch um, mild steel bar. Um, I got it off eBay, it was some scrap. It's, um, it's thick as fuck. And it's the ideal thing, I think it's about 10 or 12, maybe even longer, inches long. It's solid. It was only like 10 or 20 bucks I think, it's some scrap metal. I have in here a die, it actually is a, a transmission press tool, um, but I'm sure you can find a die that's just under two and a half inches. And this one just happens to fit in perfectly there. And under here I have my uh, pipe flange which I've machined out to two and a half inches. Now I've never done this and I've no idea if it's going to work. And if it cracks the housing then this project is a wash. So now we're going to see what happens. Well, it's not moving. And I'm pushing quite hard. So I'm a bit concerned now. So someone in the Jeep forum chat made a suggestion that I weld lines up the sides here and when you weld like that you actually cause the thing to shrink so I'm going to try that and see if it presses out more easily
Okay, it's moving. It seems to be moving quite smoothly. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, that was fantastic. So here it is. So if you look there, you'll see this. This is on the driver's side, and the um, coil bracket is really close to the pumpkin. So some weld actually penetrated right in there. So I had to go in there with the angle grinder. To really get that weld out, but it seems that I got all of it and it pressed out really nicely. So here's the really ugly welding on the inside to try and get it to shrink a bit. Okay, so the next part of this is to get the angle grinder in there and get the weld out. Now I was hoping to put this in the lathe, but it's too big for the lathe. So I'm going to have to do this with the angle grinder. Okay, so I ended up welding on the inside here to shrink this a little bit. What I ended up doing is, you can see the action that I took with the angle grinder, just turning it around to create a kind of crater in there, um, and then turning it until a very slight crack appeared. That seemed to be the only way to get enough of the weld out. This weld is very, very deep. You can see how undercut it is. Um, it really goes in there. They've welded with um, an enormous amount of penetration and then even that it wouldn't come out um, it was actually slightly distorting the my 20 ton press but then um, after welding on the inside then I managed to get it out and it's, it's quite astonishing the amount of force that this thing is embedded with you can see a slight amount of galling there there's galling on the inside uh, very slightly but that's fine so now I have a clean C bracket and what remains is for me to get the other C bracket and uh, that's also going to be a huge job. I mean this took me I think over an hour and a half to actually get it off which is a lot of time in my opinion. I mean it would have been so much easier if I had the lathe because then I could have just bought it but the problem is that this is just slightly too big to fit in my lathe even if I press out the uh, ball joints. So there you go. I mean the moral of the story here the moral of the story here is that this 
these C brackets are much, much, much more difficult to get off than anyone expected. Um, the, um, the pumpkin was easy to get off by comparison because, you know, I got all of the well in one go. Whole, the whole source, but this was actually very, very difficult to get out, um, which is very surprising. So yeah, you can see the very small, slightest crack is appearing. Okay, it may be too difficult to see, but there is a hairline crack there. So the idea now is to make the crack go all the way around. So that's probably the last I'll be using this, I don't know. So this is a lot of work to get three parts, one, two, three, <laughs> that should be available off the shelf, but you can't buy these three parts. It's hours and hours of work to get them separated and ready to reuse. And I find that quite ridiculous and astonishing. But here they are, all separated out. No damage, I mean, it's only superficial damage assembling them, and that's the story. So the next step of this whole operation is to get axle tubes to machine them to length and to press fit them in or shrink fit them or heat shrink them or something, get them lined up with my jig, and then go from there, and that's what we'll continue with in the next exhilarating episode of the Dyna 35 HP axle bolt.